Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson and I'm focused on spreading magic by discussing Disney, DreamWorks, and animation. And for some reason the fate of Tai Lung was never addressed after Po used the Wuxi finger hold to defeat him. In a blink, Tai Lung completely vanished from the world and we later find out, when the dragon warrior confronts Kai, that as a mortal Tai Lung was sent to the spirit realm using this chi based move. While this initially completely blew my mind, I loved finding out what happened to Tai Lung, I felt intrigued by another question. Did Kai steal Tai Lung's chi in the spirit realm? And of course, if you are new here and you'd like to join this community of kung fu warriors, then consider subscribing. Also, if you'd like to come chat about the villains of the Valley of Peace with me, I'm beginning to stream often on Twitch, and for example, I am streaming tonight, this Wednesday. In Kung Fu Panda 3, we come to learn about the spirit warrior Kai, who mastered the manipulation of chi with Ugwe 500 years before the rise of the dragon warrior. But once Kai decided to use these new abilities to take the chi from others to empower himself, Master Ugwe was forced to make the decision to defeat his friend, sending him to the spirit realm. There Kai remained, growing more powerful as he took the chi of every legendary kung fu master that entered the spirit realm, including the Master Badger Twins, Master Porcupine, and even Tai Lung, which I was really happy to find. Once we knew that Po had banished Tai Lung to the spirit realm, it seemed inevitable that Kai would have found and confronted that snow leopard. And studying the chains that were bound to Kai, we can see that the snow leopard appears along them, showing us that Tai Lung likely had his chi stolen. From what we've seen, the former student of Shifu was likely beaten, but I think that makes sense. While Tai Lung was one of the most feared warriors that had ever come out of the Jade Palace, so of course Kai would target the young warrior when he arrived in the spirit realm, he was also not invincible. I'm sure at that point in Kai and Tai Lung's life, Tai Lung didn't stand a chance. Still though, I think it would have been an awesome spirit realm battle. Tai Lung was a highly skilled individual with great strength, determination, and ferocity. I mean, the occasionally cynical, serious, and hardened Master Shifu even believed Tai Lung to be the dragon warrior himself. So my guess is that his chi was something Kai would have craved. I would love to see this fight in animation. I understand that it really wouldn't have propelled the plot forward in Kung Fu Panda 3, but that would have made one amazing bonus feature short because Kai and Tai Lung were two formidable warriors that nearly brought the Valley of Peace to destruction. At that point though, Kai had already spent hundreds of years collecting the chi of masters across time, so it's likely that there was very little Tai Lung could have done to take down the warlord of China. With the power of those masters flowing through Kai, the rage and might of Tai Lung would have had very little potential to stop that ancient warrior. Yeah, I'm calling out your age, Kai. You were an old guy, but you were also pretty tough and had a very cool musical theme. Man, anytime you heard dun da do da do you just knew it was going down. Kai was a super cool villain, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> As for why Kai never used Tai Lung against the many masters of the mortal realm, well, Kai didn't actually ever use all of his jade zombies, which I think was likely done so that he could continue to overwhelm any mortal that he faced. Sending away all of his chi would have left him vulnerable to other skilled warriors, which is why I think he kept Ugwe, Tai Lung, and other masters on him throughout his battles. I believe Kai was hoping to dominate everyone with the stolen chi. Plus, I just like to believe that Tai Lung had one of the strongest chis, so of course Kai would hold on to some and would send other fallen warriors to do his bidding, including some of the extremely powerful masters like Shifu, who he literally became supercharged by when his chi was taken. I think Kai wanted to hold on to the powerful chi of Tai Lung. Honestly, the biggest question for me now is, what has become of Tai Lung after Kai's destruction by the hands of the dragon warrior? Will he be able to fight Po one day again? Again? Will he ever return to the mortal realm like Kai did? Will he ever confront Ugwe? Or is Tai Lung going to remain in the spirit realm for the rest of eternity? How does Tai Lung recover from knowing he was once believed to be the dragon warrior and failed to become a pawn for another master's revenge? Maybe Tai Lung will rise again, which I would love to see happen, or maybe his fall from grace has only just begun. But let me know down below what your thoughts and theories are surrounding Kai's confrontation with Tai Lung. Also make sure to subscribe and click the beautiful bell and then click on another magical video down in the description or on the screen. And finally, as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.